Dads, let's be honest. We're not in the shape that we used to be in. You know, the years have just kind of grown a little bit over that belt. Now, we still may imagine ourselves as, you know, hey, this big hunk is running down the beach and so forth. But the reality is, is that uh, just a little more pot belly going on there. The uh, six-pack has kind of turned into a kegger, I think. And um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about how to get in shape. But we're not going to focus on the physical aspect of that. We're going to focus on the spiritual aspect on that. Physical being in shape is a good thing, but it's not in ultimate terms. Getting in spiritual shape is so important, is so essential. And so we're going to walk through just some real simple, basic ways to get in shape using that as an acronym, strong in God's Word, helpful to others, affirming the faith, persistent in prayer, and then an example to follow. We're going to take a look at uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Now, this is part of that Pentecost uh, passage and is kind of the result following Pentecost. What did that early church look like? What is the blueprint that they followed? And this blueprint for the church we're now going to overlay onto uh, applying it to fatherhood, okay? So Acts 2, 42 through 47 helps describe the church. We're going to make applications to how to be better dads. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. That's being strong in the word. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the fellowship. That's that helping and engaging with others to the breaking of bread, which is affirming the faith, and then also to prayer, being persistent in prayer. And then the rest flows out of how that example was lived out. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who are being saved. We start out then looking at what does it mean to be strong in God's Word. If we kind of look at the physical application, uh, a lot of people who are into uh, 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 muscle building and, and so forth use uh, this, uh, these products to help fuel muscle Growth. Now, this is not an advertisement for this product or, or any others, and no claims here or anything like that. But uh, again, the athletes see that you need the raw material in your body to build strong, healthy muscles. Well, when you make that spiritual application, then that, that whey protein is like God's Word, that we can do some power lifting with God's Word. But how do we get that? into our lives? How does that raw material of, of God's truth, God's Word, sink deep within? And there's no other way than to spend time in it. Spend time reading meditating on. That, that Hebrew word for meditation is just like, you know, savoring it, chewing on it, uh, devouring it, digesting it, getting God's Word in you. Now, there's some great Bible reading programs out there, how to get through the Bible in a year and, and things like that. Those are wonderful. Those are great if it works for you. But the important thing is, is not to get through the Bible, to get the Bible in you. So, Take your time as well. Don't just speed read through the whole deal. Digest it. Chew it. Let it become a part of you. Now, what are going to be some helpful ways in order to do that? First of all, it's very helpful to have an understandable translation. I have a lot of respect for the King James Version. It was, it was great. But quite frankly, I don't speak King James. 
I don't go around with these and thou's and hither to fours and so forth. And so if, if the King James, you uh, can understand that and read that, excellent, wonderful translation. But there are many others that are in our modern day language. So don't be afraid to try them, use them. It just helps you understand what's going on in God's Word. And then on top of that, there's just, you know, a multitude of resources out there like study Bibles. Study Bibles give little columns of explanation, a little background, a little insight, you know, because sometimes there are things in the Bible you just kind of end up scratching your head. And then you can read a little bit and say, okay, this is what other commentators have thought about that. And it's just a helpful tool to dig a little deeper. Life application Bibles look then to say, how can I take this word and make it applicable to my life? Some great tools out there. Then I encourage you to to partner with a friend. Sometimes to have a a friend maybe who's a little uh, further along in the faith than you can be helpful in guiding you through some things to help explain things. But the thing with partnering with somebody is it helps you both stay focused. If you have a, a plan together, you're, you're working together, you're calling each other, you're encouraging each other, it's much easier to stick to it. Just like, uh, you know, working out, if you just say, yeah, I'm going to do that tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes, and I'm, I'm going to get to it tomorrow. And then tomorrow becomes another tomorrow or next week, and it doesn't get done. But when you have somebody who says, I'm going to see you at the gym tomorrow, you're there because that person is counting on you. So having this partnership is a great way to help you dig into God's Word and then get your daily dosage. Get your daily dosage. Quite frankly, you may, not, you may go through your, your daily reading and you just say, wow, not sure if I got anything out of it. I'm not even sure if I totally understood that one. Yet the discipline of reading and in doing it through time, it, it, it's just like the meals that we eat every day. You know, some meals may be more spectacular than others, but every meal is nutritious. Every meal, you know, helps you get the things that you need in your life that you can draw upon later. So get your daily dosage and then pray before you read. Pray for God's insight. Pray for God's application. This is God's Word. He sends us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses the Bible to nourish us, to strengthen us, and so accessing uh, God's Word through prayer is such a huge advantage. Growing strong in God's Word. Second, be helpful to others. Helpful to others. It says in Acts 2 that they devoted themselves to the fellowship. Let's use a little football example, okay, guys? Can you play football by yourself? Not really. It really doesn't work. It's really kind of boring. And after about five minutes of running up and down the field, it's just like, what's the point of this? Football is a team sport, and how much better when you got, you know, thousands of people in a stand and, and so forth. It's just like it, it makes the game, and, and it, it gives you greater motivation. It's a lot more fun, and there's a lot of encouragement for one another, and so it is with our faith. So often, we Americans, we just try to do things on our own, and here's one of the biggest guys who's guilty of that, okay? Okay. I tend to do things alone, and it's not good. It's not healthy. I need brothers in my life. I need others around me to encourage me. I can't do everything on my own. We all have different gifts and different abilities, and this past week was such a beautiful example. How many from our church were engaged in Bible school in one way or another is just such a beautiful thing. And so, guys, don't do this alone. Devote yourselves to the fellowship. Get in a Bible study. Get a group of guys together who are serious about God's Word. You know what? You're not the only one. Look around. There are guys here today. They're here because they're serious about God, about their faith. And so connect together. Work together. Serve together. Guys like doing things with their hands, right? We like working on projects and accomplishing them. 
So do it together as a body of believers. It helps build you up and build you stronger, and it helps other people as well. They devoted themselves to the fellowship and then to the breaking of bread, the passage says. What does that mean? The breaking of the bread is really a reference then to communion. And in communion, we remember, we believe that this is the body, this is the blood. Jesus Christ died on a cross. His blood was shed for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. When you devote yourself to the breaking of the bread, you're devoting yourself to the core truths of the faith. 1 Corinthians 11 says, The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remember me. Remember what I taught. Remember what I did. Remember how I've challenged you. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat the bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Affirming the faith is grabbing hold of those those, uh, core muscles, those core things that, that we believe, and we say, this is what I believe. This is what I have staked my life on. This is what I am trusting in. When, when all of else in life is kind of falling apart and crumbling around, this I know without a doubt. This is what I believe. It's the core that makes up the foundation of our faith. You know, uh, legendary coach uh, Vince Lombardi is, uh, there's a story about how the team was kind of struggling, and so he just wanted to go back to the basics. And I mean, here's professional athletes, but he takes a football and he says, gentlemen, this is a football. Everybody's kind of like, duh, yeah. But it's just like, let's get it in your head, the basics, when you perform the basics, when you can you know, grasp those, when you know those without a doubt, everything else falls into place. Let's not make this complicated. Let's just stick to the simple truth. And for the believer, there's nothing better than the, the Apostles' Creed. A formulation of the early church to just say, these are the core things that, that we believe. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. That's core stuff. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, died, and was buried, descended into hell. The core things of what Jesus did. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. I believe it. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe these things? The core truths. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic, that is universal church. All who trust in Jesus Christ belong to this Catholic universal church church, regardless of whether you're Protestant or Catholic or Baptist or Reformed or Mennonite or whatever you may be, if you're trusting in Jesus Christ, you belong to this one church body, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Core truths. Do you affirm those? Do you know those? Are you strong in those? And then Persistent in prayer. Persistent in prayer. Okay, now I got your attention. Imagine you have this this awesome muscle car, right? This, this, This engine that is just full of potential, full of power, and in the back of the car is a gas tank, right? But there's no fuel line between the gas tank and the engine, Is that car going to go anywhere? It's an awesome car. It has an awesome engine. It's got a full tank of gas, but there's no linkage. There's no connection. There's no way to get the fuel to where the power is to make this baby go. Burn some rubber or whatever, you know. How often in our Christian life, 
There are all the resources of heaven. Here we are, well-equipped people of God. And there's no connection to link the fuel to the engine. Prayer does that. Prayer opens up the floodgates of heaven. Prayer uh, enables the fuel of God's power to come into our lives so that we're not doing things in our own strength. We're doing it in the strength of God. Okay, let's look at it from a techie point of view. You've got the internet, right? The internet, all kinds of information, all kinds of wonderful things out there. You, we got our little devices, our tablets, our phones, our computers. But if you don't have a modem router, the information does not get to your device. The modem router is essential. It's just a little piece of equipment that sits in the house. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, isn't all that impressive. But if you don't have it operating The information does not get through. And so being persistent in prayer means taking time. Now, there's there's these models of prayer that are out there that are beautiful, that are wonderful. Like, you know, spending an hour a day up on a mountaintop or, you know, closed up in in some sort of room. And and if you're able to do that, awesome. Friends, I'm going to be honest. I can't do that. My my personality, my, my whatever... If I try to pray by myself for an hour, my mind is wandering all over the place or I'm falling asleep, okay? So find what works for you. And for me, it's just, it's, it's, it's a daily, regular um, conversation with God as I go throughout the day that I'm just trying to communicate with God anything, any situation that hits me, just this dialogue back and forth. That works well. For me, prayer is this communication that happens between you and God. And how that works in your life doesn't have to be determined by somebody else. But you figure out your own language, how you best communicate. Not only in telling God what's on your mind, but listening to what he has for you and receiving the power of and the strength and the encouragement that he has to give for you. Being persistent in prayer. And then finally, being an example to follow. Dads, dads are so needed. And, and, and I mean, I'm talking to the guys who, who are here today, so that, that's awesome because you guys see the need. You know it's important to be here to, to spend time in God's Word, to, to help others and, and to affirm the faith and be persistent in prayer. But we are examples, examples to our children. We are examples to our broader families. We're examples to our neighbors and our coworkers on what it means to be a Christian. What it means to be a man of faith, a a man of God. And and right away we kind of get scared because it's like, I'm not this super Christian. You know, don't look at me. My, My life is pretty messed up and broken. I realize that. I've got my issues too. But God works through basic guys. Basic guys who are just willing to take a child's hand and say, follow me. As I follow Jesus, that's really what it takes. Watch me as I watch my heavenly Father and walk in his path. And we'll talk about it as we'll go. I'll be honest with you with the mistakes and the issues in my life, but I'll also challenge you with the things that I've learned and grown in. Dads, what we do is so important for that next generation coming up. As I mentioned with the Student Leadership Summit, to see these kids who just spent just, you know, two days with people who who poured love and instruction and encouragement and motivation into their lives, what kind of a transformation took place. And you have the opportunity to do that every day. Every day to encourage your child. So, Dad, you are superheroes. 
you're a superhero in that child's life. But you know where you need to look for your source of strength and help. It comes from our Heavenly Father. That New Testament church exploded because it was blessed with the power of the Holy Spirit. And that group of disciples devoted themselves daily to the teaching of the apostles, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. And that's what made all the difference. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we thank you for dads. Dads like me who are not perfect, yet who try and do their best and lean heavily upon you. And so, Lord, I pray that you just infuse us with your power and your wisdom and your strength and with persistence and all those things that we need. It help us to devour your word, Lord, to be strong in the fellowship, to affirm the faith, and to be continual in our prayer lives. Fill us, Lord. Help us to be good dads that raise up a next generation that is ready to keep growing strong in you. In your name we pray, amen.